Hello guys, welcome back to ESPN's Football Forecast. My name is James Alcott and the football knowledge or the IQ has definitely gone up a notch here because uh, Kweku's out. <laughs> The Bade who joins me. You're not the knowledge, though, just to oh. be clear. Stuart Downing, former <laughs> Liverpool, Aston Villa, Middlesbrough, Blackburn. We've got anyone else? West Pressure's West on West there. Sunderland on loan as well, yeah, isn't it? West yeah. Ham, of course, as well. Good knowledge. Uh, all of those teams uh, is here to give us that insight that you can provide as, as a you know former Premier League player. We're going to talk about the Premier League title race here. And it's, you know, what we were saying before we started, a couple of weeks ago, I did a video saying... Man United are out. It's done. It's it's just a two horse race now. But it feels like it's drifting back into that three horse race. Let's talk about Man United. Are are they in the title race? Uh, was I wrong? No, because I think a couple of weeks ago, like you said, I was the same. I thought it was Arsenal, Man City's. Um, but they've quietly just gone about their business, haven't they? Let everyone else talk about the other teams. They've put some really good wins together, some big results, and they're definitely in the race because you just you just never know. You see Arsenal's couple of defeats is that a nice place to be just because everyone's kind of going even myself i go i would say they're they're going for the title yeah but i would expect them to to fall short um and we're going to sort of talk about the reasons why they could make do it and and the other teams as well and the reason why they won't um but in terms of the psychology of a dressing room yeah is it a nice place to be where they're at right now just sort of just to the side yeah i i think it is i think obviously man united over the years have always been in the conversation and they're always going to be but the past couple of seasons, they, they haven't been. So I think the job Eric Tan Hag's done is unbelievable. I think in the next couple of seasons, they will challenge. But I think this season, if you look, just look at the progress he's made in a short space of time, it's been amazing, really. And I think he's given fans hope, hasn't he? The club hope that, you know, just what he can do in that short space of time, that we can compete. Mm. So in the next couple of years, if they get the recruitment right and get the club and the ownership, whatever's going to happen, they've got a really good chance. But they're still not out of it. You just, you just never know. Momentum. You know, that's a big thing going into the latter part of the season. So they're in the conversation. I still think Man City will, will pip Arsenal at the end to win it, but okay. they're in the top four, which is, I think, is still progress for them. The nice part of this for United definitely is that because everyone's talking about the pressure on Arsenal, everyone's talking about City not being quite at it, anytime United win, it almost feels like it's, it's, the back, it's not quite the back page story, not quite the front page. You're going to have to read through the whole paper to try and find the story about United. Mm -hmm. Which is they very un-Man United. Isn't yeah, it? and they must be really enjoying that whilst that goes on. And... At the same time, they're, they're in, a, in a cup final. They could win that. They're still going well uh, yeah. in the Europa. They could win that. Might end up at the end of the season, in, in, in Paul Scholes' word, win, win quadruple. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's on, it's on. I mean, the thing that I've been really impressed with is, so the reason why they could do it is is Ten Hag, is the mm. uh, sort of tactical clarity that he's provided, even the sort of recent switch. So we're going to do a preview on the uh, Europa League game against Barcelona, and we'll sort of dive into it a little bit more there. But that little switch with Bruno Fernandes on the right-hand side and getting the best out of those big hitters, mm. that's been really, really impressive. And also some of these these games where you don't think they would have a, a good shot at it. He's always He always seems to have a plan. You talk about recruitment as well. Mm. A lot of those players were there last year. Mm. A lot of those players weren't doing it at all. And he's, you know, imagine Luke Shaw, you know, playing mm. centre back and looking as comfortable as he does. That, that is just something that would, would be seen as stupid a year ago mm. under a different manager. But with Ten Hag, you, you just believe what he does. The reason why I think Man United won't do it is because the the big hitters, which is why they're kind of even in this conversation for me, Rashford, fifteen goals in seventeen matches. That is running really hot. As as wonderful as he is, and as wonderful as they've been. It feels like they're kind of they've got their foot down completely, and if they fall off in any way, mm. I think they won't be able to sustain it the same way as the other teams do. Do you think that's fair? Yeah, I know what you mean. Like peaking, peaking too early. Yeah, bit, yeah. and yeah, and sort of you lose one of those players. I'm not sure that the true depth in the attacking areas is there for Man United. Also, they're playing across three competitions, well, actually four. So I think. Uh, there'll come a point where Ten Hag has to prioritise one of them. Mm. I think what we've seen so far is he wants to play the same eleven every single game with one or two little changes because mm -hmm. he trusts that he can make those few changes. But then the problem is when you lean on someone like Rashford, as you just mentioned, who's scoring essentially every goal United score and the whole system is built for him, they are going to need Weghorst to pop up with a goal and he doesn't look like he's the guy who's going to get goals for him. Mm. Martial's not available. Sancho's still sort of making his comeback. There probably comes a point where you start to go... They might crack, but then equally you could say the counter to that is why can they not carry on for the next 10, day, 10 games? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And, and with Ten Hag, he seems to be able to find the answers. Uh, obviously, the two above 
for those guys. It's going to second spot at the moment. Man City, you said that you think that Man City will be yeah. the team that, that gets there. Uh, in terms of goals, they're sort of on top in that metric. 60 goals so far this season, that's nine more than Arsenal, 19 more than Man United. And that is a sort of go-to one, isn't it? You, go, you have a look at the goal difference and you kind of go, OK, they're probably uh, the best side. But we'll talk about Arsenal and their tactical familiarity, which I think has been their strength. For Man City, there's been a few more sort of chops and changes. Yeah. How do you feel about Man City this year? Do you still think that they'll just have a little bit too much? Yeah, they've got too much quality, I think. Um the know-how as well. A lot of players have been there. They know what the pressure's like. I know we talk about Arsenal and think, oh, they, they, you know, they're going to blow it. They lost a couple of games. But to be fair, then they bounced back quite well in the weekend in a difficult game where you know Villa played quite well. To be fair, mm. but I think they'll 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 take them quite far. Man City, they'll they'll push them. I think Man United will push them. But I think in the end, they've got too much quality at the front of the front of the pitch. You've got Haaland, you can score out of anywhere. Grealish, I think, is starting to step up and get big goals and, and starting to justify that under million pound, whatever they paid for him forward. And you got the bench is, is fine. And I just think the quality is too much for them not to, to miss out. Unless something really where Pep maybe falls out with 10 players and they don't want to play for him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, which could happen because Cancelo has gone, hasn't he? And other yeah. people. But I, I, yeah, I, ju I just think they'll pip them. But, but Arsenal, like you say, they're in the conversation a couple of years ago. They're not. He's done a really good job, I think, uh, Mikel Arteta. But I think Man United and Arsenal in the next couple of seasons will make it more difficult for them teams. But I just think City this season will have too much. I think what we've seen with City this year is, well, we're seeing it right now, he's playing Bernardo Silva at left-back. He, he reckons he's not, but he is. <laughs> Forrest scored their goal from the right-hand side. The furthest left player was Bernardo Silva. That yeah. would technically make him a left-back. Um, do, you, do you look at this City team and go, yes, they've got the know-how, but it almost feels like they're new to, to this title race. Like everything seems new and they're, they're dropping points here and there against mm -hmm. sides that they would normally not drop points against. I wonder. I do wonder sometimes if it's... Because I'm always very wary of, of critiquing Pep Guardiola in any way. Yeah. And you do wonder sometimes, are they taking a slight sideways or backwards step to go forward next year? Because I think in previous years they've done a bit what Arsenal are doing this year, which is plan A really, really, really well. And so you don't need plan B. I think he's been looking to sort of have different ways of, of winning games. I also think there's a he's, he wants to be at the forefront of things and you've seen that over the years and I think you're seeing that again with Bernardo Silva and I think you're seeing that with modern football now whereas full-backs are now mm. centre-backs but they're also centre-midfielders, mm. centre-midfielders playing left-back, all of that stuff. And I think the one thing I wonder with this, because I agree, I don't think Man United are doing it, I think it's between Arsenal and Man City, the growing pains of that um, slows you down a little bit. Um, I think overall, and this is the thing, you know, dropping points eight times this season, which is not very much like Man City, dropping points to Nottingham Forest, to Brentford, Everton, Aston Villa, you know, total respect to all of those teams, but that's not something that Man City normally do. That's the thing that I, I wonder is if it just gets a bit clogged up a little bit slower. And I think as a QPR fan, when you watch teams through the leagues, when they go through the leagues, it's quicker. That's mm. the difference. And so mm. the best teams are the teams that do things the quickest, in, in my opinion. Yeah. And that's why I keep, I keep coming back to, to Arsenal to win it. Not, and not because um, they're going to beat the big teams around them. I actually think they'll accumulate more points by beating the other guys. Whereas Man City, I think, could drop more points against teams on the counter-attack because they always give you that opportunity. So I'm going to go with Arsenal. I actually think, I think they will do it. I think the next five games will play a big part in that. I think Europa League is an easier competition where you can completely change it. Oh, they've got to park the Europa League. They yeah. To put, put all your eggs in the Premier League basket. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. And whereas Man City, the truth is they still do want that, that Champions League. And I wouldn't be surprised if they went and won that. I think the sensible, you know, the sensible money is on, is on Man City. So I'm going Arsenal. Stuart's going Man City. What are you saying? I'd love to back United, but I don't, I don't think I can. The only thing I worry about is... Arsenal's run is not that easy. They've got Liverpool away to go yet. They've got City away, which will be a massive game. That's game week 33. They've got Chelsea at home. They've got Newcastle away. They've got some really horrible fixtures coming. City probably have the easiest run. Mm. I think it just depends on how far both teams go in the other competition, probably, yeah. especially City, because City want to win that Champions League. And if there's ever a year for them to put their foot down in the Champions League is this year, because nobody really is 100% certain. Maybe Napoli, but I don't think that Napoli can win the double. So I want to lean towards Arsenal, but then mm. the know-how thing really... So, well, that's it. So I think the thing that stops Arsenal is having not done it before. Is yeah. that a legitimate thing, you know, when you're going yeah. into these? Because sometimes it can be the exuberance yeah. that will get you over the line. And that can be something you could put at Man City where they've, they've kind of done it. So they think they'd be OK. So there might yeah. be a couple of percent off. But how do you see that 
element of it, the fact that Arsenal, some of those players haven't done it before. I think it does play a, a, some some part, especially young players that can overthink it. Um, and like you say, Man City lads might have won two or three titles thinking, well, we've been in this position, we've lost a couple, we're not a bounce back. The manager's been there. Mikel hasn't, as he is. It's, it's all new to them. And, you know, I'm thinking of, and listen, I never won a league, but challenging for Champions League and stuff like that. We got to the end and it was a little, oh, well, we might need to win six out of ten. We start, You might start overthinking it, whereas right. the other team's like, well, yeah, we probably will win six out of ten. Their thinking's different. Yeah. I know it sounds stupid, that, but it's sort of get to the what the Fergie you say the squeaky bum time and it's like right let's see who, who's got it now and it's staying in that zone isn't it like yeah. that's you know it's a thing isn't it if you're sort of over aroused is what they yeah. say if you're over aroused then you're not you're not you're not just focusing on the yeah. job in hand and that could be something that could could yeah. get Arsenal get off the fence then what are you saying <laughs> I go Arsenal um, you're going Arsenal yeah. it's a bit of fun yeah why fun. not why not okay. I'd like to see him win it I'll be honest I'll, yes I'll, I'll, something different but I just think City have got too much okay uh, let us know guys what do you think uh, in the comments down below who's going to win the title Arsenal Man City don't forget Man United as well thanks so much for watching ESPN on YouTube and for more sports highlights and analysis be sure to download the ESPN app and for premium content and live streaming subscribe to ESPN plus